Now the second point or the second big mistake which I would like to mention today out of three is al khushu' and it is interlinked with the first one. If you are aware about the hammi of salah, you will be aware of khushu' as well. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about khushu' Allah says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 1 and 2, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ It is the believers who are successful. Successful. But what makes them successful? الَّذِينَ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ there are in their salah, in their prayer, they do their prayer with khushu'. With khushu'. So what is khushu'? Many people think if I pray slowly, that is khushu'. But khushu' is much more than praying slowly only. Khushu' is much, much more. It has, to, it has to do with gentle prayer, with standing still in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, broken in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincerity. And slow praying as well. Now, Qatada rahimullah ta'ala said, Khushu'a of the heart refers to fear and lowering the gaze in prayer. And it is amazing, it is amazing that Shaddad ibn Aws said, The first knowledge, the first knowledge to be raised from the people will be Khushu'a. That's the first thing which he's going to miss in the Ummah. And just imagine, the Salaf used to say to each other, and by Salaf I mean here the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they used to say to each other, soon you will enter a large mosque, a large mosque with many, many people inside, and you will not see Khushua there at all. You will not see actually people pray. You will see them formally pray, but the real prayer you won't see. That was at the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. That was at the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. And the Salaf used to say as well, if they saw somebody fiddling around in salah, movements, yani a lot of movements, they would say, this person doesn't have khushu'. Because if he would have khushu' in his heart, then he would have a khushu' as well on his limbs as well. But the showing that he's fiddling around with his limbs, that shows that his heart doesn't have khushu as well. So it's very, very important that we pray. And when we pray, we forget about everything else. And we pray properly. How Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray. Ata reported from Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, that he said, Abu Huraira said, Do, when you pray, if somebody prays, do not look here and there because he, I, the one who prays, he is in private talking, private talking to his Rabb, Rabbul Alameen, the Lord, the Creator, the Nourisher, the Provider, a Rabb. His Rabb is in front of him and he is in private talking with him. You are in private talking with Allah Jalla fil Ula when you are praying. So consider that. Now, one of the signs of having khushu'a, although we said it's not all of it, but one of the signs is to pray slowly. It's not the complete meaning of khushu'a, but it's one of the signs. So what means exactly praying slowly? Many people are mis they're confused when it comes to praying slowly. What they mean is, well, the Prophet ﷺ said to some of the Sahaba, um, uh, he said, do you, do you want to put off people? by making your salah long. The Prophet ﷺ also said, I have never done a salah. No, that was from Anas radiallahu anhu. He said a statement which says, I've never done a salah shorter yet more complete and perfect than that uh, I did with the Prophet ﷺ. In general, making salah, there is room for that. But when? Listen to that. The Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith which was reported in Sahih Muslim I start my salah with the intention to make it long I start my salah 
with the intention to make it long. But when I hear a baby crying, I make it short. When I hear something is be, somebody is behind me who is confused, who is bothered, who is distracted, then I make it short. This hadith is reported in Sahih Muslim. We all know the hadith of, of Mu'adh radiallahu anhu. When he prayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he went off to pray uh, in, in a near village. He was the imam there. He prayed again. So once he prayed there, he recited Surah Al-Baqarah in the first rakah. Surah Al-Baqarah. And one of the people behind, he couldn't. He couldn't anymore. So he stopped praying behind Mu'adh, separated himself, completed alone. And when the other people, when they saw him doing that, after Salah, they said, you're a munafiq. What are you doing? He said, no, Allah, I'm not a munafiq. I will go to the Prophet Sallallahu and I will tell him the whole story. And he went and he told. Then the Prophet Sallallahu addressed Mu'adh radiallahu anhu by saying, do you want to chase people away from the Salah? Do you want to chase people away from Salah? Why don't you recite surahs like Al-A'la, Al-Shams, Al-Layl? Now this surah or this hadith, many people they use it as a as a reason to make every salah very, very short. And that's wrong. This hadith is misunderstood. What we mean with this hadith, what the Prophet ﷺ was trying to say to Mu'adh here is, Aisha, Salatul Aisha, very late, don't make long surahs. The problem here was, a very long surah, actually the longest of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, at a very, very late stage, very, very late time. That wasn't a good thing. But it was a common practice to actually recite long surahs. It was a very common practice to recite long surahs, as it is reported from Sa'ad al-Khudri, Sa'id al-Khudri, radiallahu anhu, described the length of Dhuhr prayer once. He said, and this is uh, mentioned in Sahih Muslim as well, he said that if one of us would need to go to make wudu. If one of us of the Sahaba, the, start, the prayer is started. If one of us would need to go to respond to the call of nature and make wudu. And you have to bear in mind that at that time, the Sahaba usually they didn't have toilets inside their houses. So there was a, well, let's call it private toilet, uh, a public toilet near to the Baqiya. The graveyard in Medina. Near to that, there was a public toilet there. So the Sahaba, whenever they wanted to, uh, to respond to the call of nature and make wudu, they would go there. So that's a distance. It's the last thing in Medina at that time. That was actually outside Medina, at the border of Medina. He said, Dhuhr prayer started. And if somebody of us would need to go and respond the call of nature and would go there and do it and take wudu and come back, he would still find the Prophet ﷺ in his first rak'ah. In his first rak'ah. That was the length of Dhuhr prayer at the time of Rasulullah ﷺ. And even Maghrib, many people think, no, Maghrib has to be very short. That's not the case. The Sunnah, as we know it from Sahih al-Bukhari, for example, uh, mentioned Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ prayed Maghrib prayer with <coughs> Surah Al-A'raf. Maghrib prayer with Surah Al-A'raf, which consists of 206 ayat. Not how we read it, but how the Prophet ﷺ read it. After every ayah stopping, proper tajweed. So why is it that we all think that we have to make our salawat very, very short? If you don't make your salawat long, you won't feel the sweetness of salah. You won't feel the sweetness of salah actually. Taib.